Uh, Your Excellencies, Lords, distinguished guests, geniuses, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the seventh Asian Awards. Um, now, you probably notice when you look around, someone could argue, is how Asian is this room? So I would really like to especially welcome those people who are not Asian and who've come here for the first time. Um, so give yourselves a round of applause. You see, what your attendance here proves is that our celebrations of each other's achievements overshadow any differences between us. I mean, if you look around, um, you know, we know where pretty much everyone's come from because we invited them. Uh, but there's over 35 nations represented in this room tonight from over four continents and all assembled in one open city, Mr. Khan. In one open city. Did you like that? Um, and that, for me, is diversity in practice, not in theory. That is what diversity is, bringing people together to share a common goal. Over the past six years, we have honored the who's who of the Asian diaspora across such popular areas as music, cinema, television, business, public life, and of course, my personal favorite, science. Our winners who may be Asian show that overachieving is not just about them being Asian, they would overachieve despite being Asian. Diversity in the world has become such a heated topic from people's misunderstanding of, from people's misunderstanding of it and people's overpromotion of it. And the latter is what is causing confusion in today's society. Diversity and inclusion targets simply don't work. Those of you who know me reasonably well will know that I've been campaigning for the last five years to have a national channel broadcast this, and I think we're worthy of it, right? I mean, there's no reason why we shouldn't. Um, our winners are international. They will all go on TV in their own right, and it's our chance to, to now shine and, and prove that. Um, but what's interesting, if you look at television example, over the last 18 months, all the major networks have unveiled diversity targets to increase the number of ethnic minorities both in front and behind the screen. So if you look how they're fared, I mean, I'm not going to get into anything complex or political. Let's just look at something we might all understand. BBC's EastEnders. EastEnders. The clues in East. They call it Walford, we call it Tower Hamlets. How many Bangladeshis are in EastEnders? How many Bangladeshis are in Tower Hamlets? It's a complete misrepresentation of what the truth is. And I think you know that it's not just about what they think is reality, it's about what they think can sell. And it's what they believe the story should be to make it popular. And that's just one example, and there's many examples. Um, I don't know if anyone's been to Chelsea, but there's a lot of Arabs and lots of colored people in Chelsea. It's not just all white, uh, but yet the program dictates that. And so what's required to make a change, and that's what it is, it's about change. And it's about establishments de-establishing themselves for change to occur. So it comes as no surprise when you look at the, the executive board of the BBC, and I know there's, well, there's one guy over there from the BBC, um, and there's not a single colored person on that board. So then you have to ask yourself why it is that we have these challenges uh, when there's not being represented at the highest level. But last year, you know, we embraced change ourselves. And um, those of you who were here last year, ladies and gentlemen, I know that was a bit of an interruption, but please, we want, this, we want the service to continue. Um, last year, we honored uh, St. Teresa, Mother Teresa at the time, but now obviously St. Teresa. And the reason for that is not least because of what she achieved, but also it was our first time we, as an Asian community, honored someone who was not Asian. And um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to say tonight you will witness that happening again uh, when we see uh, an amazing individual for his fantastic work and tireless dedication that he's given for most of his life for helping Asian people having not been Asian himself. Um, 
I think he's just one of those amazing people uh, who will be honoring tonight, who shatter ceilings, not because of their race, but because of their achievements. And talking giving back, tonight we are in support of our charity partner, One Family. Uh, it's a global initiative engaged in eliminating global poverty, but creating real community ownership uh, of the world's poverty. So ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I, I've been given some sort of statistics and I've been reading them and thinking about them. But, you know, UNICEF estimate that 21 children under the age of five die every minute. Right, just think about that. Every minute. Through simple, preventable diseases. Just in the time that I'm, well, actually it's probably been a lot worse, but just in the time that I was doing my speech, oh, more than two children, 200 children around the world would have died. And this is between the ages of one and five. Uh, and because it's not happening on our doorstep, because it doesn't happen in this country, it's not happening on our doorstep, we seem to be immune to it. You know, when Donald Trump took over office, 10 million people around the world took to the streets to march in protest, yet no one lost their lives. When Brexit occurred here in the UK, hundreds of thousands of people went to march on the streets opposing it, yet no one lost their lives. Tens of thousands of children die every year, yet no one is taken to no streets to march in the sake of stopping that poverty. And we're all guilty of it. We are all guilty of it. It's not just, it's not just one person in isolation. It is, it is our society that we have just become so immune to it because it's not happening in front of us. And, you know, the thing is, another fact that I learned that, again, astounded me was that it, if we took just 5% of the, what the world spends on its global military budget, 5%, something to the tune of about $89 billion, that could eradicate global poverty for the year. So it means we are, you know, we are more, we are more interested in, in investing in harming each other than we are in developing each other. So, there's a lot of rich people in this room, Mr. Rami Ranger. <laughs> there's a few more rich pe richer people than you, Mr. Rami Ranger. I'll introduce you to them later. Um, so, on your tables, you can see iPads uh, for our silent auction with lots and lots of great prizes. Yes, they're prizes. Yes, they're uh, holidays or what have you, but you know what's behind it. You you're making a difference. And if you can make that difference, then please make that difference. So, ladies and gentlemen, please bid away and, you know, give openly and, you know, Give with your heart, please. This is really important, but you know, these events, like any event, the Oscars, no matter what it is, they need commercial support to function. But what is more important than what all these brands and all these logos and everything you see, it's not just that they're just sponsoring this event, they're sponsoring the, the cause and the, and the just of diversity. They're putting their brand behind us. Aston Martin are putting their car there to say that, you know, that their brand, they're behind us. So when you see these brands, and you work with these brands, you, you, you have someone who tries to talk to you, don't ignore them. This, the, it's because of them that we are here. It is because of them that you're allowed to hear that annoying alarm that we just heard. But it's because of them that we're able to put these events on and showcase our talent and have the likes of, when he arrives, Mr. Sachin Tendulkar. So please support them, because it's only through mutual encouragement that we can prosper. Um, so, to our amazing partners, uh, Aston Martin Motorcars, Bulldog, Charles Play Clothing. By the way, Charles Play Clothing spent an entire day with our young hero over there, Mr. Sadi Poir, uh, from that amazing movie, Lion. Um, uh, so, thank you, Charles Play. Uh, Shivers, Dream Occasions, who, everything you see, they've done. Um, Kick It Entertainment, Grandeur in Love, Musea Jewelers. Uh, Silver Legal, the Washington Hotel, my good friend Girish, uh, Television Centre, Here and Now 365, Sunrise Radio, Bearing Ice Vodka. By the way, don't, don't start all drinking the bottles on, on the table, but yeah. State Bank of India, Lanson Champagne, Madhu's, of course, our amazing caterer, the Taj Hotels, Asian Wealth Magazine, Cobra Beer, Amovia, all our associate partners, and uh, especially to uh, Mr. Lord Bill and Moria there of Chelsea, who has been uh, chairing and presiding over the, uh, of the judging and has been a real support because these things aren't easy to do and you know 
hey, look, it, it, this many Asians and what have you is never easy to do. So I would say a deep gratitude to everyone who's supported us, family, friends, and everyone who's stood by us. And uh, with that, because this has been going on, so I'm just going to say, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have an amazing night. You don't even know what's going on. You're going to love this night tonight. And it's going to go down in history. Watch the papers tomorrow. Read the papers. We've already been on television like six times. Support this cause. You are all part of this cause. You're all part of the movement that's going to make us shine. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have an amazing time. Love each other and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.